Here we go. You guys hear that? Uh, oh yeah. You guys like bombs? <laughs> Do I? Yeah, dude. And Come on, I have one. bomb head. You guys like bombs when it's uh, you're like a uh, weird little blue blue guy. Oh and yeah. And you gotta you gotta like uh pick them up, set all the bombs off. Yeah, yeah. I do. You like that? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I do. Dude, I, <laughs> I want I want you to place a bomb in my arm and blow it up. <clears throat> uh, that sounds cool. That sounds alright. Uh it's the Pixel Report. It's a show about old video games. Every, uh, it's a show about bombs. It's a show about bombs. We're gonna and... teach you how to make a bomb. Oh, definitely. Uh, but yeah, we, we play old video games, and then we talk about them here on the Pixel Report. And I'm your host, John Shoneman, and I'm joined by a couple other folks over <laughs> here over uh, Discord. <laughs> we got, we got uh, Aiden's here. Aiden Keys is here. Oh, my God. <laughs> you okay, dude? Yeah. All right. Here comes the boom, dude. Woo! Yeah. It's boom o'clock. Oh, you know it is. Uh, thanks for being here, Aiden. We've also got Alec Griefy here in the room adjacent to mine. Boom goes to dynamite. Boom. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> I don't even... I don't know what that was. <laughs> Uh, oh, Discord. Yeah, Discord's amazing. You can just do whatever you want on Discord. Uh, Eric's here too. Hi, Eric. That's me. Uh, how are you feeling? Oh, how are you guys feeling today? <laughs> Tired. <laughs> Drove it's Father's Iowa. Day. Ha- Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Happy Father's Day, Dad. I hope you like b- bombs. <laughs> <laughs> I sent I sent my dad a bunch of bombs. For Father's Day, <laughs> in the mail, carry bombs. You can send bombs in the mail. That's, yeah, that's like the main thing mail is used for. That's fine. Um, do you guys, do you guys Don't do joke. any, do you guys do Don't anything joke. special for uh, Father's Day? Do anything cool? Drove back from Iowa. Uh, I, I hung out with fun. my dad and my mom with Elizabeth, and it was <clears throat> sorry. We played some ping pong. Oh, cool. Where do you play ping some pong? Enchiladas. We actually. We recently got them. They found like a hundred dollar ping pong table on Facebook Marketplace. Okay. So we played it in their garage. Okay, I see how it is. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, we used to have a ping pong table at our house in Merrill. My brother and I would uh, get pretty crazy with that thing. Anyway, uh, we have a game to talk about at some point. But first, Eric, do you wanna? Do you have a you know a warm up topic? Sacrifice. I think John's talking, but I, I cannot hear him. I can't hear John if John is talking. John, Hello? we can't hear you. Hello? There you I are. Can hear you. I can hear uh, him now. That's, that's not good. Yeah, you're back. Maybe it's my my, uh, my settings. I don't know. Yeah, it's probably your settings. Just lower it. Lower it. Lower it, John. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. You just go click the little gear symbol called, it's called user settings oh, yeah, by your it. username in the bottom left. And then you can voice and go video. down voice and video, and then you can adjust input the sensitivity. input sensitivity, or you can click automatically determine input sensitivity. Okay. This is good content. Yeah. I, I, I turned it down, so hopefully it works now. I'll try to talk a little louder, too. Anyway. All right. I feel here's like the I, question. Here's the question. Go ahead. Question time. Okay. As always, in relation to our subject matter for this week... Many of us may have experienced at some point in our lives a bomb threat <laughs> to our schools and that caused school to be canceled or something like that. So my question for this week is what was the weirdest 
or what's a story you have about school being canceled? Uh, hold on, I got to because put some... of because of because of not because like of a snow day, but you know because of like a bomb threat or whatever. Uh, I need to get up and put on some deodorant because I'm sweating bullets. But you guys, <laughs> go ahead and talk about this. Okay. All right, Alec, you got any? Um, when no, I don't. But when I was working at the TV station, we would report on the many bomb threats to the Wassa School District. Oh, were there a lot of them? Yeah, there was like one month where there was like one every week. <laughs> Something silly like that. None of them were ever real. That's They're so never silly. Real. Bomb um, threats are just silly. I don't. Yeah, I got I don't, when uh, I was in school. I had a lot of bomb threats called in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember at least one one a year, if not more. Did you do anything fun on any of the bomb days? I remember one in particular. My friend and I went to PJ's, which was a, a corner shop. We went and bought some Mage Knights, uh, which we used to play with, but not play the, the actual game. We used to just play with the little figures. Oh, ah. so we'd we'd bring them home and then we'd cut <laughs> them off their cut, cut them off their little bottoms. What? <laughs> That's illegal. It's illegal, dude. They can't. Yeah. Mage Knights came on like these little dials that you would turn when you were playing the actual game. And since we just bought them f for like playing with, we would cut them off the bottoms. Okay. That's illegal. Yeah, well, it's against. That's the like rule. cutting off the tags off your bed. It's just not allowed. That's like cutting the picture off of a Pokemon card. Oh my gosh. That's like what it is basically. <laughs> yeah. you're, taking <laughs> all the, you're taking all the stats away and stuff. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's pretty funny. Uh, I don't um, I don't remember anything really with bomb threats. I think maybe one time in high school we had to like <clears throat> evacuate the school for a little bit or school got canceled or something. Uh, I remember I remember when some someone in grade school uh, like their pepper spray broke and we had to evacuate the school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it like got in the events of the system yeah. of the school. So me, Alec, and John all went to the same elementary school. So we all shared this yeah. story. Alec, what do you remember about that day? Um, that we were all coughing, and then the teacher got mad at us for coughing. <laughs> yeah, then, like, I was mad too because I was fine. And then like Jeff Saul was just like being a little bitch, and he was like coughing <laughs> and crying and stuff. And I was like, dude, just chill out. And then yeah, there was pepper spray. So. Yep. <laughs> Pepper spray. Yep. That was a weird day. All right. Well, that's what I got for the question of the week. Okay, okay now cool. let's talk about bomboozle. <laughs> that's slash that's a kablooey. Talking about those bomb threats is a great segue into this week's game. Bomboozle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh Aiden, you picked the game Bomboozle. Oh, I sure heck can Why do. don't you tell us what it is? Uh, this is an uh, isometric or top-down puzzle game Ugh. that uh, was originally released on the Amiga, Atari ST, and Commodore 64 in 1988. Ooh, that's uh, we, old. We played the American, North American version that was renamed Kablooey that came out in 1990. Yes. The version, yeah, the, 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 the version, I don't... Was it called Kablooey? I thought it was still called Bamboozle, the one that we played. So the, the ROM I, I found called it Bamboozle, but the Super NES version was called Kablooey. Okay, so. gotcha. K-A hyphen B-L-O-O-E-Y, which is, I feel like there's an interesting way of spelling Kablooey. Yeah. Why is there a hyphen? Ka! It adds interest. <clears throat> there was also a sequel to this game for the N64. Oh, wait, really? Yeah, and that was called Charlie Blast's Territory. Charlie Blast Territory. I want to look this up. I didn't know that. It's very, very literal title. He's blasting territory. <laughs> oh, it was no, also it's the his territory. Ch it oh, like he's the possessive. Like Charlie Blast's Territory. Okay. All right. And then a cell phone That's game weird. was released by yeah. the same company called The Bombing Island. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> I don't see what's wrong with those names. Those sound fine to me. Yeah. His uh, surname was The Bombing Island, Kid Clown's Crazy Puzzle. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this who made this game? The it was name? made by Imageworks, who mostly published games. Um, it was designed by someone named Anthony Crowther. 
and David Bishop. It's like a British game. Anthony Crowther has his own Wikipedia page. Yeah. Oh, he, he made, apparently he worked on Aztec Tomb and Bat Attack and Potty Pigeon. All these games are for the Commodore 64. Worked, Until on, you get... worked on some Harry Potter games. Realms of the Haunting. That sounds cool. Yeah. Yeah, so Anthony Crowther and David Bishop were the first to design this game for Imageworks. Okay. And uh, then Imageworks put it out. Okay. Seems like later in his career he was making some not-so-great stuff. But he did make Burnout Paradise. I don't know if he made it. He's credited as having worked on Burnout Paradise, so... Mm-hmm. Which is apparently a very good game that I've not ever played, but ooh, that's a good one, John. You'd like that game? Yeah, yeah. I like the Burnout series. I don't know if I played Paradise. I mean, I played Burnout. Burnout. I I loved Burnout Three. Uh, Paradise Burnout. Paradise was like a big open world game. Yeah, now. yeah. I, I'm sure I would have liked it if I played it. That's more of a Midnight Club man. Oh, you know? yeah, Midnight Club's good. Oh, uh, okay. Get out of here. <laughs> Midnight Club Three Dub Edition. Okay, so. Anything else the folks at home need to know about Bomboozle? Is there like a story well, or, you know, anything like that? Describe the gameplay. I don't think we've done that yet. It's like a, a tile-based puzzle game where there's a variety of bombs, like small ones and big ones. Okay. And the bigger they is, the bigger they explode. <clears throat> and the more explodes go off, they explode each other. Boom! You get hit by the explode, you die. Yeah, that's uh, that's what happens. So the whole point is to kind of uh, set these bombs off, explode them without exploding yourself. You need to do it and like figure out what order to explode them in to uh, successfully complete the puzzle. Right. Right. Without blowing yourself up. Uh, so you might need to move them around. Do you know? Do do stuff like that too. Surprisingly, Bomboozle received mixed reviews. Why do you say surprisingly? It got a 97% from Zap64. I mean, that's a pretty high review. Um, And Commodore user gave it a 49%. That's a large discrepancy. (laughs) Zap called it an addictive puzzle game with cute graphics. Do you think they paid Zap for for that review? Yes. Yeah, I don't know. They were paid off for sure. Uh, Everyone who disagrees with me was paid off by the government. And yeah, Hillary. I don't say anything about the government. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Old video game magazines were basically just all advertising, uh, either advertising or straight up propaganda. In Nintendo Power's case, but yeah. Hey, <laughs> Nintendo Power is a reputable source. Okay. I'm just saying, I only know there are only two people on this podcast who read Nintendo Power growing up. And yeah. both of those people are weird about Nintendo stuff. So. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you mean by weird? Oh, you I, guys I are know. weird, dude. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. Alec and I just like good games. All right. <laughs> uh, you think I, at some point, You've probably said the N64 controller is good, which is just wrong. I've never <laughs> said that. Okay, I don't you like that. Said that dude. You, you, okay, you say the GameCube controller is the best controller, which is not. Okay, I love the button layout <laughs> on the right hand <laughs> for the right hand. I think that that button layout is really good, and it fits your hand a lot better than the typical like diamond layout. But I, I agree with you on the C stick and the Z button. Not okay, good. Nice. Yeah, we've definitely talked about this. Uh... <laughs> At length, this is a fixed report. Listen, anyway, basically every episode, I think we mentioned the GameCube yeah. controller. <laughs> You're like, it's the best one. I'm like, the C stick sucks. That's the whole discussion. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the cover for the uh, Commodore 64 version of Bamboozle is a lot better than the SNES version. Yep. Uh, can we can we at least agree on that aspect of the game? Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm, I'm glad it's we're dynamite. I'm glad we're straight. It is dynamite. Uh, Whacking bomb, great bomb, have great. a nice day. <laughs> Speaking of dynamite, what is the what is the bomb on the side of uh, in the movie uh, about the end of the world, directed by Stanley Kubrick? Uh, what's that? The comedy uh, what's the f- apocalypse. Doctor Strange Love. Doctor Strange Love or Howard Lander. <laughs> what's the name? What's the words on the side of the bomb when it's going down? Oh, it's like shoot. It's like pee pee. <sighs> <laughs> 
I gotta look this up. This is more good Bomb content. Words, strange love. Riveting content. Oh, okay, anyway, I can't, I I can't love find it. I, I can't oh, find oh, it. Oh, it's a hi there and dear John. Okay. That was, okay. That's really Anyways, interesting. <laughs> so, what do we like about Bamboozle? Um, it's a video game. I like I like that it's dynamite. And I like that the main character looks like a rejected Mr. Potato Head with radiation poisoning. Yeah, he looks like Grimace. <laughs> he, there's something wrong with. Is the name of the character Bamboozle or like what's going on here? No one knows. I don't think the character has the name. Okay, well, can we just call him like Mr. Bamboozle when referring to him or something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Bamboozle. Uh, Mr. Bamboozle looks like there's something wrong with him. Um, yeah. He, he's like blue. He's got a red nose. Um, his like proportions are all screwed up. He reminds I, I me of the main character of Eggs of Steel. And like in terms of the kind of the way that he looks, yeah. But like, there's even less of a reason why this character would exist. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, like it's like, oh, it's an egg in a factory. Okay, I guess I'll just accept that. It's a blue guy with a red nose, diffusing yeah. bombs, and the blue boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this character is definitely uh, an abomination. <laughs> he has those like, like those like white plastic Mr. Potato Head arms. He has buck teeth. I don't know. It's it's just a horrible looking uh, character. I like when he <laughs> when you blow stuff up and he has an animation for it. Yeah, yeah, that's, He's like, that's okay. Ah, it's scary. So, oh, right, here's a question. Here's something I did like about the game to get the ball rolling. Okay, we get, more. get an actual thing that we liked. Yeah, I said I like, one. Okay, yeah, you did. I liked that you could um, you could decide whether you wanted to play this game top down or an isometric view, or like which. The game calls 2D and 3D, but basically it means like you're looking at the game, like it's like tiles, kind of like if you play like mobile games, what's the name? Like 2046, that one mobile game where, you know, 2048, like kind of like a top down, like that kind of tile y kind of thing, or like an isometric, like Super Mario RPG or whatever, like looking at it kind of from a side camera. Mm -hmm. Now, personally, I ended up preferring the top down, but just having the option, I like felt pretty nice. Like I felt like that was like a cool design decision to like let the player choose which of those two things that they want yeah yeah i think it's good that they had the option and i think that the isometric view is probably like i feel like in those days people would have preferred that because it was like kind of this pseudo 3d thing that looked more mm-hmm. like cutting edge uh but i thought the game yeah. was much harder to play in that view so yeah i, I also just played in the top down view um yeah i think it looked better from the isometric view though yeah it definitely did Reminded me of uh, the first game we ever played for this show that I can't remember the name of. Equinox. Uh, that Equinox. 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 Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Equinox vibes. Yeah, the other game I would compare this to from the, our history, and, and I'll probably compare it to it a couple times today, but uh, mm-hmm. Super Sokoban as like a yeah, sure. top-down kind of puzzle game for the Super Nintendo. Um, obviously, I think with the I would specifically point this game, and I know this came out before Tetris, but the reason why this is on the Super Nintendo is probably because Tetris exists, and like so. it just made like the it made the two D puzzle like kind of genre explode in popularity. Dude, Cubert. Oh, Cubert's good. Um, here's a question: yeah. Did this game come out before or after the original Bomberman? Uh, probably four, dude. Well, okay. So the so? original. Let's see. Someone's got. What was the original on? Was I'm, I'm looking it up right now. I'm know. looking it up. I think it was SNES. No, no, no. It's after Bomberman NES came out in '85, and Bomber oh, okay. King, wow. the sequel, came out in '87, and the original Bamboozle came out in '88. So actually, okay. no. This is this this is after Tetris too. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so yeah. So clearly, like a small Tetris influence, even though it's a very different kind of game. Um, it's it's different, like, but I think it's probably. This game's probably a little Bomberman influenced. Like, yeah, I don't know if this would exist without Bomberman either. I mean, it's a much different style of game than Bomberman. Yeah, because Bomberman is kind of like an action title that okay. follows similar rules to this game, right? But this is like a puzzle game where you're supposed to you're supposed to like figure out basically how to do like a chain reaction, right? Yeah. Um, and there's no enemies for you to overcome, at least not in the levels that I played. Did anyone reach like 
anything where it wasn't just a puzzle game, kind of like remi- like Super Sokoban, where it's just like different levels over and over and over again. You have to solve mm-hmm. the puzzle. Whereas yeah, that, that's how this game is as far as I played, but apparently there are a couple of enemies that show up later on. Oh, okay. Called, uh, like Sinister and Nipple or something like that. <laughs> sinister Nipple? And they don't... There's not like a ton of interaction. It just is like you have to avoid them while you're doing your work, you know? Yeah. Kind of like Pac-Man. Blow them up. Yeah. If you mix, um, mix this game with Pac-Man, you got Bomberman. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't, yeah. I haven't played that much Bomberman, Bomberman, so I don't even. Yeah, don't no. Know. Just just to put it into perspective, John, Bomberman has like competitive. I want wouldn't call it competitive like an esport, but it has like competitive multiplayer as a mode. Okay. Like so, Bomberman, like when you like you can like you play the game, and it's like I'm dodging my friend's bombs and trying to plant my own. Where this game, it's almost more like you're a bomb diffuser, right? You're trying to like blow up all the bombs and stay alive. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, um, I think defusal by detonating bombs. Yeah. yeah. Like, what do you like about bomb bamboozle? It's, uh, you know, nothing really <laughs> stood out. <laughs> nothing stood out to me oh, that I'm boy. like, wow, I like that. You know, it's it's just one of these kind of. It's a game. I had to. I had to <laughs> kind of like, stretch a little like, bit. It's like, what's your favorite part about tic tac toe? You know. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I like, I like the X's. So maybe to help yeah, so like, yeah, I like the bombs. <laughs> maybe to help describe just a little bit about what the gameplay is like, Aiden once used this term when we were talking about Super Sokoban, and I think applies to this game too. This is kind of a, a T, TI like 84 game, like the calculus calculator games, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like graphing calculator. It's like a graphing calculator game, like in a sense. Like, yeah, everything I, is kind I of slow. See that. So, like, that might help the audience at least understand a little bit, like, what this game kind of is. Yeah. So, like, maybe that kind of game just inherently feels a little less engaging, right? It's, you know, than, like, the typical title. Not in, like, a bad way. Just, like, that's just the way that it is. Like Alex said, tic-tac-toe, what's your favorite part? I I do like the uh, player one, get ready kind of voice. That yeah, there's, like, voice acting yeah, in this. The vo- I don't know. The, okay, so when I was watching gameplay for this game on YouTube, like the the voice sample, like the player one, get ready. It's like very clear, and you can actually tell like what they're saying. And then in this mm-hmm. emulator that we were playing, it was just like <laughs> they wait. Eat, eat, eat. <laughs> it's like you can't understand what it's it was saying. A little more like the Animal Crossing voice. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty weird. But I put that under the good category of like things that yeah, I like. That's definitely so. good. <laughs> I, would, I would. I like that too. Yeah, there was a little bit of character. Yeah. Um, I would say one thing that I liked about the game is I think, like, like I kind of, I think I probably said this about Super Sokoban too, but just, like, in general, like, these kind of puzzle games where, like, you just have your time, you, t- you can take your time, and, like, you solve it. There's just a satisfaction to, like, solving a puzzle and knowing, like, that you did it on your own and feeling good about it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. especially in this game because... Um, the, at least the the more difficult levels that I played, it'd be about like it wasn't just about blowing up all the bombs, but it was like blowing them up in such a way that you would survive when you blew them up. And it's like figuring out how yeah. do I arrange the bombs in order for this to happen. You know what yeah. I mean? Because sometimes That's you like, can you can pick up the bombs and move them. Yeah, to, uh, and that to help solve the puzzle. Yeah, uh, and so to me that that leads to like a satisfying gameplay loop where like you're excited to play the next one or the next one like entices you a little bit because you're like. You're, you're on a little bit of a high from the last one that you just figured out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I didn't hate, hate the like playing this game. Like The puzzles were, were fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, they were just fine. Like There was nothing really like that interesting or like super fun about solving the puzzles for me. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess like difficulty-wise, the, they were pretty good because like a lot of times games like this like old puzzle games are just really too difficult uh, i think and that becomes really frustrating but in this game it felt a little more like they weren't that hard to figure out they're just kind of there's like a decent balance between being satisfying and like not being too hard i don't know for me i kind of put these kind of games in like the same category that i would put like sudoku or a crossword puzzle like yeah I'm going to the bathroom, you know, 
and like I'd pull out a book with a bunch of kablooey puzzles, you know, and I'd do that. Offer, you know, <laughs> well, it, it, we it's, all a do it. it's a hard ringer to like mobile games in a sense. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, like, like mobile. Here. I mean, I, I'm I'm playing this game on my Switch called Golf Peaks, which is like a golf puzzle game, and like there isn't much about like the actual puzzle solving in that game that's that much better than this game. Maybe it's just like presented a lot better, I'm like mm-hmm. and it's like on the Switch and stuff. So I don't know, it, you know, maybe something about how this game just like might not resonate with people in 2019 just has to do with <laughs> like the way that it looks and the like the music and stuff and the horrible character. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. <laughs> wow, you yeah. hate that guy. I, he sucks, dude. Like he looks like shit. We're in like the positive parts of the game section, and John just like, yeah, I fucking hate this and that and this. Like, just the character is really bad. I just had to like get that out of the way immediately. I just think the character looks like shit. But, yeah, and there's, they don't really like, like they don't really like give you like a narrative reason why you're doing what you're doing. Right, like. It's just like, yeah, you are going to, you're going to defuse these bombs in the vastless void. Like, at least, like, Super Soaker Bomb, and it was like, gotta make money, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, like, I'm moving boxes in the factory, or whatever. Gotta get the ladies. Or, like, a game like Devil World, remember that game? Like, that game was similar to, like, Black Luster. <laughs> <laughs> that game was, like, I would say similar in terms of, like, the lack lusterness, but what it did have going for it was, um... It kind of like it had like this weird like imagery that was like kind of evocative with like the Christian imagery and stuff. Yeah, you're, like you're like a dragon killing the devil. Like it's like this weird. It's like weird in like a, a way that makes you want to maybe play a little bit more. But this yeah. game, I agree that, that the visuals weren't really doing the game any favors. It wasn't like enticing you to keep playing or to grow interested in like this whatever plot that wasn't that didn't exist. Yeah. Uh... I have some some of the music playing in the background right now, pretty quietly. What do you guys think about the music in this game? I thought it's sure. <laughs> yeah, I would say bad. Okay, so the song that's playing right now is the it's the end song. And this actually sounds pretty good, but here I'm gonna turn it up for a sec. So just one sec. Um. I know you guys can't hear that, but it actually sounds pretty cool. But the music that plays during the levels is just like, uh, like, make it stop. <laughs> yeah. And it's always the same it's song, pretty right? pretty noxious, yeah. Um, I'm going to play a little bit of the music from the Amiga version, because that is way better than the SNES version. Yeah, the like, SNES I, version. I looked up the music yeah. from the Amiga version, and it was like, whoa, this is, this is tight. It has like a like, thick, dirty bass line and like these slapping drums. Uh, yeah. The thing to know is like, even if the music is like passable, you're going to have to listen to it a lot because like it's a puzzle game. You're just like sitting right. and doing levels over and over again. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And so like, you need to have either you need to have really good music. Like a like a puzzle game should have like good music and a lot of it. Like yeah. in my opinion, I'm gonna turn um, up this Ami- this Amiga theme for a sec. Is that okay? okay? Go ahead. Yeah. I'm like bobbing my head right now because it slaps so hard. It has like these weird vocal samples on it too. Anyway, yeah, the the Amiga music is pretty tight, but unfortunately, we played the SNES version, so it doesn't count. Doesn't <laughs> Thanks, count. Aiden. Yeah. I'm sorry. No. Yeah. And yeah. So, um. So like that would be. Um. I'm trying to think if there's anything else like positive that I kind of want us to talk about with this game. I would say just like like in general, I think chain reactions are a satisfying thing, and I think that when this game does them, it's like and you do you get it right. Like that, I don't know, I said that it feels good, but I'm thinking about like there's like some games like like old like flash games where it's like literally just like try to make the biggest chain reaction or something like that. Yeah. And like so, I think there's a, something satisfying about like watching one little thing do a bunch of big things. You know what I mean in like a chain. And yeah. so, like, when this game has that, I think that that's pretty fun. Yeah. I, I get that, for sure. And um, I bet you the explosions look better in isometric view. Probably. But, but like, yeah. 
Do we want to go into complaints? Yeah, let's I, move that, on. That would be one of my big complaints. Move on to stuff that we didn't like. Um, I think the controls in the isometric mode were horrible and impossible to do. So basically, that mode was impossible to play. Yeah, even if we like the idea of it, <laughs> right? The execution yeah. is just isn't there. It's like you hit you hit the up arrow to go up, and you don't go the way you think you're gonna go, and then you fall off and die. Yeah, well, uh, the problem with an isometric view with a D-pad, right, is D-pad goes up, down, left, yeah. right. But an isometric view, everything's like in diagonals, yeah. right? And uh, so I feel like I feel like the angle of the view in this game was just like a little. It was like tilted a little more than it should have been or something, which made it even more confusing to like figure yeah. out directionally. I, I don't know. It just felt really bad. No, you also yeah. want to be able to see like what tiles the bombs are on and the layout yeah. of the level, and you can't do yeah. that in the isometric view. Uh, mm -hmm. And not only... And, like, it's bad in the isometric view, like, by inherently, because you can't see the whole level. But even in top-down mode, you can't always see yeah. all the stuff. <laughs> well, did, like, did you guys... and that's one of the worst things about this game. Well, if you hit the start button, you get... It pauses the game, and you get a view of the whole map. Yeah, yeah. but I, I knew that. But, like, it's still... Like, that's like you're interrupting the flow of the game to hit the start button to see the whole map. Like, that's kind of lame. True. Like... That's true, but that's also, pl like, playing any video game in 2019. <laughs> It's like Wait, hitting, really? hitting the map button every 10 seconds. I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm playing Resident Evil 2 right now, and that's like my entire experience with, with that game. Uh, but that's besides the point. A, can I, can I give a counterpoint? Can I give a counterpoint about why it's particularly bad in this game? Yeah. So in Resident Evil 2, your primary gameplay is doing like action, right? You're like moving from one action sequence to another. You're fighting enemies. You're collecting items, doing all this stuff. All right. Um, and so then you're hitting the map so that you can traverse and go between these different action set pieces. It's like you're hitting the map to get between levels. In this game, in order to traverse the quote-unquote action, you have to use the map, right? So imagine if in order to fight the zombies, you had to click start, right, and look at the map, and then unclick start, then do some stuff, then click start, and then look at the map again. Like, right, it kills the gameplay flow. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, so to me, it's not the same as like, oh, I have to check the map, you know, when I'm playing the game, because like this is like it's part of the actual puzzle. You have to check the map or you have to like walk around and like look at everything. Yeah. And it just it kills the flow because like the game should be like you look at the puzzle, you think about the puzzle and then you solve the puzzle. Right. And like that becomes a lot more difficult when you're like having to hit start and you're having to walk around and look at everything like because you're not able to perceive the puzzle right away you have to like there's like a barrier between you and perceiving the puzzle and to me that's just a that's just a bad game design like they had there had to be a better way to implement that so you could see the whole puzzle at once yeah yeah I, i'm with you um so yeah that's I think, how i feel yeah i think the uh as with most games that we play from this era that have a life system where you have limited lives uh i thought that system was pointless and frustrating <laughs> Especially because you could just put in the password yeah, that they like, gave you at the beginning yeah. and just go back to the same level. So, like, it's a very art, it's just incredibly artificial. Yeah, right? it didn't really make any sense. And, like, a lot like, of the time, you... a lot of time games have lives because they're, like, ported from arcade or whatever. And that's just, that's just how it was. But I don't think this game was ever an arcade game. No, it started so, out as an Atari game. So, yeah, I don't know why they thought they needed that. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was dumb. Uh, I don't know. I mean, like I said, there's nothing about this game that was like so horrible. Aside from the character, this is kind of like just kind of blah to me. I, I don't know. It wasn't that engaging. I agree. Yeah. I, don't think <laughs> I, <laughs> I thought it was a nothing game. Thanks. Thanks for picking it. How many nothing games is it in four or five? You've chosen. <laughs> You're going to give this one a okay. zero out of zero? No. Okay. okay, so, like, what I would say is, like, in terms of, like, calling this a nothing game, I don't think this is a nothing game. Because, like, part of our, like, statement for this game is to, like, historicize video games and, like, look at their history. And I love, I love it when we play games like this because they remind me of, like, mobile games. And, like, you can see, like, a very clear, like... How, like, video games used to be, like, this niche thing that was only on these particular kinds of systems, right? Gaming consoles. And maybe on a PC once in a while, right? Especially in the 80s. Like, not very much, though. And then, like, you see how it evolves into, like, these different 
platforms and different ways of consuming games. And so like this fits a lineage of what puzzle games were and are now. And like it fits in that lineage, I think, in a really unique way. Like, yeah, it's maybe not a perfect game, but it shows the ways that this particular genre has grown over time. And I think it helps us if we're like, you know, imagining fleshing out the the history of games or whatever. This helps us understand that a little bit better in yeah. episode sixty seven. So I don't I wouldn't call it a nothing game. That that that's my defense of b- bazoom. Bamboozle, Bazumba. <laughs> I think, uh, I mean, I, yeah, I think that's true, but that doesn't make it like fun to play in 2019. No, or, like worth I, like recommending to, like someone play it, you know? But yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, but it's worth remembering. It's even worth, if it's not it's, worth playing. It's worth remembering. Someone had to think of that character design, and I don't know what they were, <laughs> well, I don't know what they were thinking about, but. Something was going on with they were thinking whoever about thought potatoes, about that. dude. <laughs> it's definitely a Mr. Potato Head thing. I don't know. It's weird. Um, is there anything else we should talk about here before we uh, review this one? Any <sighs> important points? Alec, you sound like you, you got, you're uh, ready to make an argument here. Uh, no, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. Okay. There's nothing left to say. There's a we didn't talk about the ice tile. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that was actually something I wanted to talk about. Go ahead first, Alec. <laughs> okay. There are uh, there is a tile that you sl- slip on, adds more to the gameplay. <laughs> it explodes. Yep. There are tiles. Gonna, okay, there are I tiles like the that, ice tile. There are tiles that you slide on. There are tiles that will fall away after you step on them, and then there are the regular tiles that you can just step on normally. Yeah. And the train tracks. And there's the tracks so you can move the bombs on. Yeah. The choo choo train. We we like lightly mentioned Pokemon earlier in the episode. I think we were talking about Pokemon trading cards. But it reminded me of like the kinds of puzzles, like the the, the layout and the way that the that certain tiles interacted with the player reminded me of like puzzles in like a Pokemon game where it's just like this is like a little thing that you're doing in between like gyms or something. But the problem is, is that that's entirely what this game is, right? And so you can see, like, some of the maybe minigame influence this game. I don't know if this game necessarily invented these tropes or these kinds of mechanics, but you can see, like, what is most of this game's gameplay would be another game's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, we just threw this in here to give flesh out the game a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's part of the reason why it feels more like a nothing game, because it feels like a, a B-side or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I wonder if this game was sixty bucks. It probably was, right? Uh, it's probably pretty expensive. Yeah, sweet. Not worth, not worth <laughs> that price. I wonder. Sure. I wonder uh, how many levels there are, or like how long it would take. To I eat. can. There's a hundred thirty. Oh, okay, that's kind of a lot. It'd probably take you. It's a hot on the Wikipedia page. It'd probably take you a hot second to finish that. Um, yeah. But man. Puzzle games can have like can have like an artificial like kind of like oh you have, you have so much content right because you just have to keep in, keep designing more puzzles right right um, yeah like the witness <laughs> <laughs> oh it's just sure. design more puzzles uh. I mean I think that this game is a little different than the witness nah, I'm just sense. I'm talking about yeah. ass yeah yeah. I think like this uh, is like an arcadey kind of like you do each stage kind of thing. I think it's I all know, the same tile set and stuff. I know yeah. that this is probably a controversial opinion, but I think Portal is better than Bamboozle. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> you moron! <laughs> I think Portal is like maybe a little more uh, evolved of a puzzle game, if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, maybe like but a little bit. It's a little bit more. Uh, anyway, yeah. let's move. Let's review this one. Let's get let's get it, give it some scores. Yeah, bitch. Aiden, did you have a review that you found? There weren't a ton of reviews, so I just took this one by a user okay. called Wutex on the website honestgamers.com. Oh good. Yep. Okay. You know that his, his headlines here is Kablooey is truly something special. Most bad games offer some sort of entertainment. Deep down, you know that you could be playing a more fun game, but at least you are slightly entertained by simplistic mechanics. In Kablooey, any or bamboozle, any (laughs) semblance of entertainment in the game is constantly bogged down by some of the worst design decisions that could be conceived. Wow. That's harsh. 
most of the aspects of Kablooey <laughs> are pretty weak on their own, but they all come together in a way that makes Kablooey one of dot dot dot. Okay. Stop there, uh, but here's another line. All right. <laughs> Never before have I contemplated suicide so seriously. Wow. <laughs> oh my now God. that's an honest gamer. He, so, gave it, he gave it half a star in 2007. So I found Jeez. somebody who gave this game, an, uh, who viewed this game Bob Wade for a magazine in, uh, in, for the Amiga version in 1988. Hold up a second. Um, Bob Wade from there, Magazine? Uh, the magazine was uh, Ace Advanced Computer okay. Entertainment. I thought you were just saying um, that the name of the magazine was Magazine. I, I linked it to you guys in our chat. Okay. That's going to be um, the future magazine. And he write, he gave. I just love the score. That's what I really want to share. He gave it nine hundred and nineteen out of a thousand. What? The? That's right, a thousand point scale. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm going to start using the thousand point scale. That's pretty amazing. It, it, it released for only nineteen ninety nine UK dollars, so that's oh, okay. something. Well, there you go. And uh, only nine dollars for the Commodore sixty four, uh, um, and he said the puzzles are brilliant and the levels are numerous and tough enough to keep you glued to the screen. You'll manage all the levels eventually, but you'll really get your money's worth in the process. And um, so it's, it was not exactly the same game because this was the Amigo version. But I I just thought that that I just love that nine hundred and nineteen out of a thousand. Yeah, yeah that's, that's amazing. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, I would give this game. Like four hundred and fourteen out of a thousand. <laughs> I thought I thought it was it's like pretty low, John. I mean, yeah, it's like the same as a four point one, which is what I'd actually give it. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, it's I'm fine. Gonna... You know, I I didn't really enjoy it that much. I didn't hate it. Uh, you know, pu- like Eric was saying, puzzle games like this, there's always like unless they're just terrible, there's like always kind of an element of satisfaction to playing them. So mm-hmm. it at least had that going for it, but I didn't really like nothing about it really stood out to me that much. So except the character, uh, but not a good way. So, you know, yeah, 4.1 out of 10. That's, that's what we're doing. I give these kind of games two out of five. <laughs> Just as I would <laughs> crossword puzzle, I'd give it a two out of five. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I could see myself playing Bamboozle on the toilet it's marginally stimulating yes <laughs> marginally <laughs> stimulating two out of five <laughs> okay fair enough it's the same score i gave it so you gave it 4.14 i mean that's you just round down it's two out of five not exactly no, dude not really because it's like you know for us a six is average you know because we get because that would be like a three out of five or whatever but I don't. I don't know. I don't think it's the same. I think once you're in different, you can't just you can't just say a two out of ten is the same as a two out of or a four out of ten is. The same. It, 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 in mathematic it, terms, it is it, very similar. It, give it but to okay. us. Give it to us. David. Give it to us. <laughs> give me the loop. All right. This is zero out of zero. No. Oh. <laughs> you can't do that. It's a, one, it's a one out of five. Ooh, my heart. Game. One out I, of five. I yeah. It's a game. It's a video game. All right. Aiden, why'd you pick this one? <laughs> I like the little ugly blue guy. Okay, all right. <laughs> that's that's, that's good enough for me, I guess. <laughs> Eric, oh, I'll take us home. I think that, like, with the proper presentation, uh, I think with the proper presentation and like a, a more smooth gameplay with a, with like much prettier graphics, a more zoomed out camera, this could be like you know an entertaining little puzzle game that you play. You know what I mean? That you enjoy. Yeah. But there's there's a little too much just getting in the way of like actually enjoying like the simplicity of this kind of interesting puzzle game. And so I'm going to give it a two out of five because I just think it doesn't do what it sets out to do. Like that, like there's like, like on one level we could say, uh, these are like these puzzle games are like nothing or whatever. But on another level, we can just clearly admit that this is trying to be a certain kind of puzzle game and it's failing to do that. Well, you know what I mean? And so, like even if we can, you know, so that's how, that's kind of how I feel about it. Um, but I do do like that I found out that there's an Amiga fan site out there that archives literally does like for each game, like up to like a dozen like reviews for each game. I didn't even know that the Amiga existed until now, but I guess people have fond memories. So that was at least I learned that. Yeah, that's good. Well, that's uh, Bamboozle. 
called Kablooey here in the U.S. And that's the game. Do you guys want to do some news real quick or some letters? It's the news. Some letters to the editor, maybe. Here, let me play. It. I'm gonna play us in with this uh, Kablooey song, high score. Here comes the news. It's the news here on the Pixel Report. The latest in gaming news. All right. That sounded funny to me, but you guys couldn't hear the music, so. Uh, I believe it. Okay, so I got a uh, GamePro from... I don't know. I couldn't figure out when this game came out here in the U.S. It just said 1990. So I have a GamePro from April 1990. That's just just a random one that I pulled from 1990. Uh, I got some mail. I got some letters to the GamePro editors. You guys want to hear some? Yeah, read them to me, boy. Okay, this one's coming in from Larry Callis from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Whoa! Larry says, it's a little long, I'll try to paraphrase a little bit. <clears throat> he says he's been an avid game player since the day uh, I bought my first Atari. I received my first video game when my parents gave my brothers an iPom, and that game was worn out after a year. Uh, that game seems boring now, but it was the biggest thing in our house for two years. Now I have three different systems. We have the Atari, the Sega Master, and the Genesis, and 120 games. I'm planning on playing video games and reading GamePro <laughs> for years to come. Who knows what's next? How about an interactive hologram video game? That's his letter. What do you guys think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's what's do, you think ho- do you think holograms are coming? Yep. No. HoloLens. Uh, Google Glass, it's like AR, Minecraft, it's like holograms, kind of. Minecraft, Earth, whatever it's called. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Uh, well, the editor replied, uh, here's hoping you and GamePro will both be around long enough to enjoy the interactive hologram video game system. It may be closer than we both think. Well, now, uh, what is it, 29 years later, almost 30 years later? And still no holograms. Still no holograms. Where's my Cortana, Microsoft? (laughs) Uh, This one comes in from James Duffy from Parker, Colorado. I I have a question that I hope you can help me with. Over the last several months, I've been designing what I feel is a great quality arcade game. I'd like to see it developed into a game for the Sega Genesis or the uh, NEC TurboGrafx. Is it possible for me to do this on my own? If I'm not able to develop the game myself, how does an idea like mine get to the point of becoming a game cartridge? Uh, you guys are experts. Um, how How is uh, James going to get his game into a cartridge? Well, first, um, I want you to uh, d- uh, just, <laughs> just, just, just desert all your dreams. Okay. And go get a real job. Give up. <laughs> okay. That's our advice for James. <laughs> Uh, the yeah. game, the game pro editor says we checked with our technical editor editor and found that games for the Genesis and Turbo Graphics are programmed in p- proprietary program environments. You can't make games for these systems on your own. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I would say uh-huh. first, like you're gonna have to design that game for PC friend because that's that that's where you can actually design games. You know what I mean? Yeah. That would be like like I don't know, like. You know, in 2019, I'd say there's probably a lot of resources out there for you to design your own game. But for someone in 1990, that, that would be pretty tough. Yeah. yeah. But the, the game providers could have at least tried to be like, oh, here's like a, you know, here's a book you could buy that helps you with like learning how to design games for the, you know, for the computer or something. Yeah. They well, weren't very helpful. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, Little, uh, no, go ahead, Alec. Well, do we know James Duffy went on to create uh, The Witcher 3? Yeah, he, he, <laughs> he founded uh, CD Projekt Red. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, most of the GamePro letters to the editor back in 1990 were just people talking about how much they liked the magazine, So, which is not interesting <laughs> to us. No. Um, not too interesting. Not even interesting in general. It's kind of just no. It's the game yeah. pro magazine, right? They're just like just jerking you know. themselves off. Uh, yeah. Well, and then you know what? The news isn't interesting either. I looked at it. <laughs> it's just like it, the news in this, like these old game pros, is like here's literally like ten paragraphs talking about all the games that are coming out. 
It's like okay. Yeah, give us just give us just one game, even if you don't know what it is. Uh, bulletproofs. Okay, bulletproof software's adaptation of the Lucasfilm plumbing masterpiece, Pipe Dreams. Uh, it's a lot more intriguing than it sounds, and it's totally addicting. Cool. Pipe that's, dream. What, that's what is the, Pipe Dreams? I don't know. It was a. Oh, well, they said Lucasfilm masterpiece, so I assume that that was a. Like a movie or something? I, I guess. Here we go. Roleplay fans should watch for the Great Warrior Saga from Square. It looks like there's going to be more than enough Game Boy games to go around in 1990. Woo, Game Boy. Yeah, so they, that's, they, that's what that... There's was like three, pa- three paragraphs talking about all the Game Boy games coming out. Um, <sighs> Game Pro, you piece of crap. Yeah, so well, well John, that's... thanks for thanks for bringing the news to us. You're welcome. Uh, I think that's gonna do it for the show today. Nothing uh, show for nothing game. <laughs> <laughs> zero out of zero for Bamboozle. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll be back uh, hopefully next week talking about more old video games. Uh, Ziggy the dog will be here. He'll I'm be, trying to mute him, but he'll be yeah. here all week. I'm just gonna keep the stream rolling, and Ziggy's just gonna be here. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can find us on Facebook if you're not listening there already at facebook.com slash the pixel report. You can also listen to this podcast on your favorite podcast app or Spotify or, you know, wherever. I don't know where yeah. people listen to podcasts. But, but I hope you like but the, you I can. Hope their stream, friends. Yep. Uh, we'll see you all next time. Uh, thanks, guys, for being here. Thank Bye. You for- see you later. What, what, Alec? Uh, thank you for being, <laughs> being here. Thank you for being. Wow. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.